As humans, we perceive ourselves as highly intelligent creatures able to control our destiny, surrounding and behavior based on highly evolved logic. But recent psychological and neuroscientific researches reveal that we may have less free will than we believe to have. Our genes, upbringing and environment influence our behavior in ways that often escapes conscious control. And furthermore, our actions most likely are caused by many factors not accessible to our conscious introspection, including quite possibly some tiny single cell parasites lodging in our brain or in our guts, making us act their silent commands. Let's take, for example, the single cell organism Toxoplasma gondii, is one of the most widespread parasites in mammals. Gondii can only reproduce inside the brain of a cat while it can live in a dormant state in almost any mammals. To reach its goal, Gondi enters rats and mice's brain and eliminates their instinctive fear to cats, making the rodent more and more prone to be eaten by them. It's very important to also note that the rodent, while it is infected by the parasite, does not display any other symptoms, doesn't display any unusual behavior other than this very, quite strange, mild attraction to cats. And in humans as well, toxoplasmosis, which is the presence of the parasite Gondi, is considered symptom-free, other than with newborn babies and with people with low immune system. But on the other hand, a study in the Czech Republic discovered that drivers infected with the parasite Gondi are involved in vehicle accident six times more frequently than other drivers that are not affected by it. And it's also known that humans suffering schizophrenia, schizophrenia are three times more likely to carry the Gondi parasite in them. And this so far, we are just talking about one parasite. In our body, there are more than 500 different species of bacteria, parasites, fungi and viruses. I mean, 90% of the cells in our body are bacterial. They're not human. We go from the fungi that are trying to grow between your toes to over two pounds of bacterial matter in your intestine. I mean, altogether, we are a very a highly complex conglomeration of living organisms. And each one of them has a very clear evolutionary agenda on how to better survive and reproduce. Like recent studies done at the University in Hamilton in Ontario are proving how intestinal bacteria may influence thoughts and even behavior. Now, I like to assume that we can easily agree that our thoughts influence our actions. So, if a bacteria in my guts can influence my thoughts, is it fair to conclude that this bacteria could at least influence my decision-making and therefore my free will. If we take this scientific discovery and accept that our behavior is a result of many complex relationships happening within, within our organism and outside of it, if we accept our organism as an, as an instrument in the orchestra of life, our role in the symphony changed dramatically. Imagine that you're not the only living organism with a direct interest in on how your body, how your life is developing. Imagine you're not one single undivided organism in charge of your behavior. You are just not one body. You are a combination of hundreds and hundreds of intelligent forms. What does it feel like? And we are not invoking God's will. In this view, it's life itself evolving and developing as a complex interaction between multiple, innumerable organisms. In this viewpoint, humans are no longer at the top of the pyramid, at the pinnacle of knowledge. Humans are no longer the only living organism making decisions, conscious or not, on how their species evolve. 
And yes, humans are an amazingly important part of the puzzle. A very complex organism that has extreme capability, but in a unified view. If we consider interdependence in nature, if we consider non-duality, if you will, we are only an instrument in the orchestra. We are not the music itself. The mystics say that the main reason of our suffering is our desire to have things happening differently from what they are. Maybe by accepting life as a complex system of relations, maybe by redefining and accepting our role as instruments in the orchestra of life itself, we can rediscover a new way to be human. It could be a way that can keep us in harmony with the planet, in harmony with the people around us, and who knows, maybe it can even give us a better understanding of this little parasite that is trying to kill us in its attempt to survive. Maybe we'll be better in accepting what is. Maybe we let, can let go of our fear of losing control and start loving unconditionally. You are as important as a blade of grass. What are you proud of? said Nisargadatta Maharaj.